Glorify yourself in Turkey, God. Glorify mm. yourself in Syria, Father. Uh, oh, boy, fill their mountains with the praise of the living God. Yes. Cause our eyes to see that. <laughs> Oh, Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, glorify. Be glorified. Lord, glory yourself. Glorify yourself, Glorify yourself. Glorify yourself. Yes, Lord. This is harvest time. This is harvest time. This is harvest. In Jesus, Amen. 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 Oh, God. Yeah, for those of you that came late, we were praying. We were led to pray for Turkey and Syria. Of what's going on? And it's no accident. It's no accident because God wants them saved. He wants their knees to be bowed at His Lordship. And every that will confess that he alone is Lord. He alone is Lord. And that brings back a vision I, uh, we had at a camp and in Israel twice the same vision came. And I was in the presence of those who brought the vision. That thousands upon hundreds of thousands of Muslims are, were bowing down to Allah during the time of Mecca. But as they bowed down, Jesus appeared. And when they got up, they were Jesus. All those hundreds of thousands of Muslims were worshiping Jesus because he made himself real to them. And I believe today our intercession went over to these nations. Mm -hmm. Believe that. We could touch nations. We can touch nations in the spirit. There is no distance in the spirit. We're going to believe God. We're going to hear the news. And we're going to see. And God will allow our eyes to see and hear what he has done within this past hour. And I'm not saying we're the only ones who are praying. But we are the ones that he chose to anoint to send that, that de declaration over there at this hour. So, Father, we thank you, Lord. Come on, let's lift our voices and thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. 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 Thank you, Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Thank you, Father. 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 Thank you, Reverse the work of the enemy. Did anybody have a vision or a word that we could share quickly before we go on? Anybody had a vision or a word uh, while we were praying? 
for the past 20 minutes. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Okay, well, we will carry on. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for those who join us late afterwards to bless us all. I shine in a new way. You said your words are spirit and your life. Lord, let it remain in our spirit. Because your word is eternal. Let it remain in the soil of our hearts. Lord, let the transformation be this afternoon. Let us remember. Let these words not just fall to the ground. Let it not just be a not a good message or a not a good teaching, Father. But let it be one that would change our lives, our destiny, our future, our identity, the generations ahead of us. Let it be changed. Let it be changed, Father. For the next hour, we commit to you, Abba. Open our ears that we would hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Open our hearts to receive. Let us be focused on what you're saying, Father. And we ask you for a fresh baptism of your fire that will burn every chaff, everything, every hindrance, every spirit of distraction we bind even right now in Jesus' name. Power of yes. Only Jesus will be lifted up, Father. That's what you're doing, what you're about to do. And what you are going to do. And we seal it, Father, the Lamb. We seal what you're about to do in the blood. And we will not lose our deliverance. We will not lose breakthrough. We will not be stupid and foolish to tell the wicked one, Father. But we'll be what you're putting in our hearts today. In Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, welcome everyone. Julia, welcome those from far and wide. Amen. 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 God was with his head with fresh oil. I heard fresh oil. Fresh. Amen. If you were up for Jesus, I that he's filling your mouth with words hashara bam your tongue will amen. be the amen thank is... you thank you minister usha all right the grace i grace flowing from grace of the hope flowing from arava san i hear pastor jennifer i don't know if you're a pastor or what but you're a shepherd is for the most high God. She, uh, he's bringing you into new ease. I see you in the water, not on the shore, but in the still water. There's going to be an ease coming to your ministry. It's going to be flowing along with the spirit of the Sister Pamela, your praises have been like a fragrance to the top. Oh, yes, I see him bending down. And your intercession, he's bringing you up to new level. With the brokenness of the Bible says that he's nigh unto a broken heart. Yes. Pastor Michael, I see your path is light. Your path is light. In Proverbs 4 18, let that be your scripture. For the path of the righteousness of 
the righteous is a dawning of a new day. There's a dawning of a new day in your There's no more. There's no fall into ditches. But is it not? You're walking confident. You're walking boldly before. Isha Rabba this is a day Maybe all of you she will this God. She ta 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 the mark of the Lord is upon your forehead. Yes, the mark of the Lord is upon your forehead. She, the blood, the blood of the Lamb is upon your forehead. And you will settle for nothing less than God's very best. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, she. Thank you, hallelujah. She, the day, the day, she, the day. Yes, rivers of living water is flowing upon all of us. She to She to She to I will this period of this scripture in my story this morning. Matthew 4 4. It says, Men shall not live by bread alone, by every word. That proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. Man shall not live by bread alone. Every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. Hallelujah. And the number four is leadership. Is a thought. Four, four. So it's a double. It's a, what God is doing is a double. Been asking certain things that he's laid on our hearts, and double and even more. Yes, Father, do the overflow today. Hello. You say you want to sign up? Okay. Lord. Sorry. So we will see the teaching. How can you get to start prophesying? For those of you that have missed the past my three, I believe you could on with you beginnings and you can um, open it and go over those teachings. That the Lord has given us for the past three weeks in uh, preparation for where we're going. Yeah. Thank you. Pastor Michael, could you continue um, to read? Please? Yes. You, you can hear me, yes? Okay. Um, an open heart can cause an open heaven. Many people want to be used by God in the gift of prophecy, but they don't know how to get started. What do you do? Number one, personal preparation. Nothing can replace personal preparation. And the first item is a balanced and diligent study and application of God's word. Number two is allowing the Holy Spirit to prepare your spirit for soul searching. Uh, Psalm 139 verses 23 and 24 tell us how the psalmist said, search me God and know my heart, test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there's any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. 
So as we see here, an open heart can attract, I like the word, attract an open heaven. Because our heart is connected. Jesus himself says, only the pure in heart will see God. It's easier when we allow God, when we allow God to remove those things. And we spoke of them in the previous teachings. And I might touch one or two as we go along. But it's very imperative, it's very crucial that we let go of these things that cause us to pull us like invisible strong chains, pull us backwards. We're making one step forward in these teachings. And then I've heard, you know, in some instances, but I'm going back and do those same things. Well, I'm believing God to today will settle that. Amen. Let's believe God by his spirit will settle those things. You see, many of us, it says he wants to be used by God in the gift of prophecy. And this is just one of the gifts that we're speaking of, but there are many gifts. But you know how to get started. We do. Personal preparation is crucial. Take the life of our Lord Jesus Christ. He was in preparation for how many years? 30 years. For how many years ministry? Three years. See, 10 times. Not that he needed to be prepared. He was already prepared. The Bible said be the very foundation of the world. But he wants us to follow his example. Like Minister Caroline, she spoke a story about two weeks ago about two farmers that I think went out to chop down trees. And one, his axe was very dull. And he had a hard time chopping a tree compared to the other one who took time to sharpen his axe. And in one chop, the tree was down. And that's where God wants to bring all of us to be sharp in the spirit to be discerning, to be sharp, to uproot those things that is in, in, in our way. He's given us all the authority. If we're born again, filled with his holy, precious spirit, that same spirit that rose Christ from the dead, it's in each and every one of us. God to bring us up into high places in the spirit realm as we open up our hearts and allow him to, to help us because we can't do it ourselves to prepare, but we got to want it, we got to desire it. But God and drew in you know, our hearts. Down. You see, the blind cannot lead the blind into a ditch. The one. Precise, discerning, full of God's light. All in the process of. So this is not a message or a teaching to bring none of us in condemnation because we are all in the same boat. We are all in the ark. Amen. So now, Holy Spirit, to prepare our spirit. So we'll search. We gotta be on it, like the psalmist said. Search me, O oh God, and know my heart, and know my anxious toward me. Some version says, know my wayward. Thoughts, our thoughts that go in all directions, and we invite darkness in and see if there's any offensive way in me and lead to the way fast. Only God could see as He put His search lights in our hearts, and we take that time. time morning's message it was powerful at nine o'clock especially when the reverend us i fell on my knees for um, some because i didn't think i could have bring speak i could have but i what got to go down deep you know all of us and drill that he showed by his spirit. And all of us have things we are all dealing with. 
Thus, the sweet Holy Spirit, our helper, the man he's up, he, he judge and condemn us. But he was sent to love us and walk us through those rough paths. Some of us came from trouble and traumatic backgrounds in childhood and has not been healed. You're going to believe God those found it. And again, we are new creatures, but there's things that need to be chopped off from our memories. Some of our memories needs to be healed. Some of our souls needs to be healed. And that's why we have to ask God. We can't go around, go around the mountain for the next 20 years. God, when we're getting it. He's holy. He wants us to cry out to him. God and and test no my anxious thoughts. And see if there's any any wicked way. Some version, I love that one. Wicked ways in us. And there is wicked ways in each of and lead us to the last. But we've got to want to be changed. We've got to desire more of Him to hold on to these. Because you see, the more of Him have to be the less of us. You gotta remove those things that are hindering, that are standing in the wind, blocking our progress. And call to move out, walk in our distance. So we're going to ask God, Father, create and renew the right spirit. Lord, put your hunger within us. Some of us don't have a hunger as we for, for you. Lord, stir the hunger in our hearts again. Help us to come up, uh, to come back to our first love again. When we first we couldn't stop. Now, Osha, I noticed uh, that, that it's cutting in and out the sound. I don't know uh, if that's experienced by everybody. I experienced. Uh, yeah. Okay, I left the phone. Sorry, I got the phone. Good, thank. You. Is it better? Hello. Yeah. Yes. Yes, it's yes. better. Uh huh. So did, did you all miss a lot in the past five minutes or should I? Yes. You did? Yeah, I thought it was just me, but if everyone had that, yeah. I'm, I'm not sure if others can share. All right. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We, I was just praying for us to, our hearts to be renewed. Yes. Yeah. And have a right spirit within us. Uh, Lord, in the name yeah. of because that's him. That's his heart for us to have his heart and a right, his spirit. And I was praying that we, he, we would have a fresh hunger. And that we would come back to our first love. Yes, okay. Yes, Lord. Bring us back to our first love. That any other love will have to be number two. Because you're number one in our lives. Yes, Lord. Yes. Father, draw our hearts back to you, Lord. Father, touch, touch our hearts today. And you said a pure in heart will see you. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Um, thank you. Like the scripture says in Psalm 139, verse 23 and 4, as many of you have read, let's be honest and ask God to search us. You know, He's the only one that is perfect. He's the only one that is spotless and white. And we could become more like him as we press into him, as we come closer to him, as we continue to seek him with all our hearts. He's going to make us more like him because that's his desire for us to be less of us and more of him. Mm -hmm. Okay, can we move to the other slide, please? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
I think we are at, yeah, let God baptize us, I think, with his love. I'm not getting that. Could we go one slide backwards, please? No, the other one after that. After. Yeah, and bab let God baptize us. There's number two, with his love. First Corinthians 13. Could you read that, um, please? Yes. Let God baptize us with his love. First Corinthians 13 says, this chapter demonstrates the intensity of God's love. If we have no desire to bless others, the gifts of the Spirit will not flow through our life. Much has been given to us and much is expected of us. First John 3 verse 17 says, but whoso hath this world's goods and seeth his brother have need and shut his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? In the same way, if you know that God has given you the power to deliver others and set them free, and you do nothing, you will not be blameless before God. If you have this ability to hear the voice of God and relay his message to others, and you do nothing, you cannot be excused. Proverbs 3 verse 27 says, Withhold not good from them to whom it is due, when it is in the power of your hand to do it. Amen. But I'd like to retrace back to, um, I'm going to read 1 Corinthians 13. And if I speak in the tongues of men and angels, but have not love, I'm only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and knowledge, and if I have faith that could remove mountains, but have not love, I'm nothing. If I have, give all I possess to the poor and surrender my body to the flames, but I have love, I gain nothing. And love is patient and is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, and always hopes, and always perseveres. Love never fails. So that's the, the foundation of our ministry. It could be prophecy, it could be a teacher, whatever we're flowing with the Holy Spirit. Everything else will fail if it's not under the banner of God's love. So we got to keep that. He, should, he said, you shall know them by their fruits. So that is very sobering that we can have all these other things going on, these glitters, you know. But if we don't have God's love, we just allow bail. And I say, I'm saying, notice I'm saying we, we are all subject to this. Because I believe God is calling us up to a new level of his love. Because like I said before, the less of us is the more of him and his love. And people would see and feel that love. So if, like you said, if we have no desire to bless others or go the extra mile, the gifts of the Spirit will not flow through our lives as God intended it to. Yes. And it's a thing that he has given us his Holy Spirit. He has given us the gifts. He's given us freely his Spirit and the gifts. And in return, he's looking for character, or character to become more like his. That's our gift to him. That's our gift to him. 
when we allow him to deal with our impatience, when we allow him to deal with those eerie in our lives that makes the father weep. And grieve his Holy Spirit. When we could talk so much that we override that one that is trying to tell us something. Last week we spoke about listening. Listening and hearing are two different things. Listening is listening with our hearts, listening with our eyes, listening by the spirit. Listening is work. Listening. And do you know listening could bring healing to that person without us even saying one word? We don't always have to talk over to somebody. Just listening could bring healing to that situation. It says in 1 John 3, 17, For whosoever has this world goods and seats his brother in need. And it does not only go for physical things. It's easy to give physical things. Yeah, it's easy to just write a check or give whatever. But to give of ourselves is another thing. It's another something. I hope I'm not the only one he's convicted. Mm-hmm. I hope, or I hope I'm the only one he's convicted. We have to be, God wants us to bring us up. Sorry. I'm with you on this one. I'm with you. Yeah. Yeah. It's we have to be very careful. God is sending a lot of babies to us. Mm. Those that are broken and wounded. And, um, you know, we have to be very sensitive in the spirit. Very, very sensitive. Because if we could lose them. We could lose them. Mm. Amen. It says, withhold not good from those whom it is due when it is in the power of thy hand to do it. He has put the power of his spirit within us. Like Reverend said this morning session in the nine o'clock. We got to come up to a higher place than just praying a little two minutes, a little five minutes and dump into bed. Uh-uh, that is not going to cut it. The devil loves us to do that. But God has so much more to show us in the spiritual realm. Our spirit, like she said, is always alive. It's like an antenna. It's always, you know, it's going, looking back and forth. And he's only praying in the Holy Spirit, getting on our knees, declaring a word over our, like you said, if someone says command the morning, where well, we could command the night. We speak into the night, the nightly realm. The powers of darkness. God wants us to be sharp in the spirit, all of us. I know this is no jumping up message, but we, all of us on this line has been saved more than five and 10 years, I'm sure, or many of us, most of us. We got to grow up. There are many, many that are waiting for us. They're waiting for us. They're crying out. The nations are crying. What you and I have here on this forum, many people don't have it. Many churches don't have it, and I'm not exalting the, the ministry or the leader. I'm exalting Jesus, because she's been through her, her pain to get to this point. And it's only prayer can bring us over the other side. It's only seeking the face of the Lord can bring us over the other side and bring others. It's not about us. We're pulling on us, others with us over the other side. Jesus told his disciple, let's go over the other side. Let's go over, guys. There's a, there's a one, and there's only one that he went over to minister. That is filled with demons. But his heart, 
He already saw in the spirit what he needed to do. I'm sure the disciples were grumbling and complaining, why do we have to live? The spotlight is here. The video is going. Why does he have to leave? But no, he saw in the spirit what he had to do and he had to go. And that one, that one was gloriously delivered. And that's when we are living in the spirit realm. We will go and do. Everybody else might not agree with us. Our finances might be zero. But we were always told, our faith, our faith will take us over there. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Could we go to the other one, please? C.S. Lewis had a quote here. It says, he said, aim at heaven and you will get earth thrown in. Aim at earth and you would get neither. Yeah. The psalmist says in Psalm 121, verse 1, I would lift my eyes towards the hills from when cometh my help. My help comes from Jehovah God, the maker of heaven and earth. Could you imagine the access we have to heaven? We're in earth, but we could be in the heavenlies in a moment's time. Just a moment's time. And there's realms of God's glory that cannot be opened by anyone except you. You, your voice, my voice. There are certain anointings God has put on different anointings, unique anointings. And God has placed upon us. It's only you could touch the heavenlies for that person. That's in your field. It's your harvest. God give all, each and every one of us our harvest. Remember those with the talents? You give them their, their talents. And it's only you and I could touch those ones. Only you and I with a special unique gift he's placed within us. We got to release our voices. We were taught always to release our voices. And God hears and delights in our voices of faith, of faith. People need to hear the sound of faith in our voices. And how can we have faith except we walk through those those rough places, when we come through those fire, those fiery furnaces, those deep waters where we, our feet weren't touching bottom. We were twirling in, in those, and you know, some of you know what I'm talking about. Only you could tell your story to bring that one out. Only you. So he places value in our words that agree with his words of faith. There's a sound. There's a sound of anointing comes on your voice when you walk through those hard places. And when you come out with no smoke, no bitterness, nothing in a heart but a pure heart. Because through the fire, we could praise him. Through the storm, there is a praise within the mouth. It's there. We just have to go in within and bring it out. It's there. Song is of deliverance. The Hebrew boys, they had a praise. Three were thrown into the fire, but a fourth man was there. God is calling us to a high place of prayer. I believe we cover that in one of the sessions. A high place of prayer a high place of praise that the devil hates us to praise him. But we have to do what the devil hates to please our father. God loves to hear our voices. 
because we are his beloved ones. It express who he is. He's the lovely one. According to Zephaniah 317, the Lord your God is in your midst. He's a victorious warrior. The mighty one will save. He will rejoice over you with joy and gladness. He will quieten you with his love. He will rejoice over you with shouts of joy. And if you were to look up in the heavenlies, you would see that's what God is doing. Because that's what his word says. He would rejoice over us with singing and dancing. Singing and dancing. Some of you will say, does he sing? Does he dance? Well, he created us. He's the origin. He's the first one. And he put whatever is in him within us. So let's dance with the same rhythm that he's dancing with. Amen. Let's sing that very song that is on the heart of the Father. Let's think the very thoughts that he thinks. And I'm believing God for it to happen today to all of us. That when we're dancing, we'll be dancing in his rhythm. Hallelujah. It says he would quieten us with his love. Many of us have been traumatized. Many of us have been pulled through some rough, rough tunnels and hard places. And our emotions are all over the place. And some of us are still bleeding in those places. The memories has been traumatic. Had it not been for God, you could have been mentally ill today, but God. But God wants to heal today. He wants to quieten us, our spirits, within us, with his love. Just like how he spoke on the boat with his disciples, peace be still. He wants us to bring us to that place where we will be sleeping in the midst of the storm like he did. He wants to bring all of us to that place where our trust will not be in ourselves or our abilities or what we have or what we don't have or what we think we need or we don't need. Our trust would be on our Father's heart and in his love. I hope somebody's getting something here. And when we come to that place of the quietness within us, it's like a deep artesian well. Naturally, a joy will bubble up from within us. The river of life will bubble from within us. So whenever we speak, our expression will be full with joy. And that's one of the platform that we prophesy from. That's one of the joy. That's one of the, the gifts. That's one of the fruit of the spirit God wants to, to release in our lives. I remember times going through some really rough patches and the spirit of laughter. And I'm sure many of you, and I, and I hope many of you, if you have not, has, re has received and experienced the spirit of laughter. It's wonderful. You laugh until you laugh that you can't stop laughing. But actually it's healing. It's the new wine that he's pouring out on his people. And actually, Father, I thank you for releasing the new wine on your people today. The new wine of your spirit. That a Holy Spirit laughed to and flood all of us, Father. In those times when the memories, when the enemy bring back those memories, replace it for laughter. That we would laugh in the face of the enemy. Because you sit in the heavens and you laugh. The Bible says Father, release the spirit of laughter upon your people. That wherever they go, they would bring laughter, even in the most crucial situation, the most diverse situation, Father. 
that we will take love to the laughter of the Holy Spirit that will bring healing on your people. Thank you, Lord. It's the glory of God. The joy of the Lord is the glory of God. However, there are times when you would bring forth a prophecy. It may not be from a joyful heart. Even the joy is in there, simmering. But they are prophets of old and today too, because the same spirits still live within us, of travailing of situations, of coming from groaning, of authorances that we cannot explain, but it is of the Holy Spirit that you could bring deliverance to that one in trouble or that one that is chained to the purposes of the devil. We could, in intercession, those kinds of deep intercession could free God's people. I'm sure many of you have experienced that. And if you have not, ask the Lord for those depth of intercession. So, thank you, Lloyd. A joyous heart is cleansed by thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is very, very crucial. We, he said in his word, in everything, give thanks. In everything. In everything. Even in the good things. Even in the bad things. Even in the adverse things. The things we don't like or the way, the way it's going. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, because your ways are perfect. Lord, I don't understand. I don't like, but I'm going to give you thanks. Nevertheless, I'm going to give you thanks. And watch that situation change. Watch, and it may not even change, but you will change, you and I. And that's who he's after, to change us for his glory. To remove those things that hinder his glory. And a vision that God gave me this morning as I was preparing of us coming under the glory spout where the glory can be poured out. He want to pour out his glory upon us that people could see his glory in our eyes. When they look into our eyes, they'll see the eyes, the shining light of Jesus. They will not have to ask, do you belong to him? Because his light will be shining in our eyes. Thank you, Lord. How many of you desire that? Just lift your hand right now. Lift your hand and say, Father, I want that. I want that, Father. I want your glory. I want to be a vessel of your glory. I want the anointing of your glory to rest upon me. Wherever I go, I'll be a deposit of your glory. I'll be a deposit of your glory to bring healing to your people, to bring healing to those in bondage. Yes. Thank you, Lord. It's contagious. You and I could change an atmosphere with our laughter. that is bubbling from within us. We could change an atmosphere of, of people are complaining and mumbling and grumbling. We could take it to another level with a positive remark or something glorious. Something would bubble from your spirit. We can do it. He's given us the power. We are atmosphere changers. We are. Thank you, Lord. Can I have the notice slide, please? Um, <clears throat> I'm going to read this, Pastor Michael. The importance of a good example to emulate. To emulate means to strive, equal, or excel. And 2 Kings 2, 9 says, And when they had crossed over, Elijah said to Elisha, and what shall I do for you before I am taken from you? And Elisha said, please let a double portion of your spirit be upon me. And when Elisha asked Elisha for a double portion ministry, Elijah responded, you have asked a hard thing. 
But Elijah was not concerned about how it was. He wanted it desperately and was willing to pay whatever price was necessary. He refused to leave the prophet's side. The anointing is costly. It will cost us everything. The anointing is costly. It will cost us everything. It will cost us family relations when need be. Career, finances. In some instance, ministry to prepare you for something else, somewhere else. Some of us are holding on to some things that God wants us to let go of. We got to let go of some things to get hold of something else, a greater, the greater things. In my experience, I remember in the early 90s, God spoke through a man of God for me to leave New York City and to come upstate New York to live on that farm. I'm like, oh, no, I don't think so. I've got a ministry on a train. I've got things going on, and I don't think so. But when I took two steps away from him, I heard the Holy Spirit say, that's me. That's me. I'm calling you to leave everything that's familiar and to come follow me and to be with the prophet. To be with the man of God and to serve him in that ministry. And I did. It was not easy, but I did. And I'm sure many of you have done it. And it's not a one-time thing. There are seasons God is going to call us away from things and, and groups of people, even ministry, to go somewhere else. That's why we have to be flexible to the Holy Spirit. If you notice Jesus' ministry, he never stayed one place. He never stayed among his own people because he was a Jew. I'm going to hang out with the Jews now. He came for all people. For God so loved the world, entire world. He came for all of us. So he was flexible wherever the Spirit would lead him, wherever the Father would tell him to go. He's all of play, different places. Every day his agenda was different because he was being Spirit-led. Now you and I have to come to that place. You and I have to come to that place. I remember I for, for years I've worked, always loved education and, you know, want to get to, to, to some of it. And I remember when I graduated and with my bachelor's and my professor called me and she said, you know, we have two scholarships and you're one of them to get your master's. It's free. It was almost $70,000. And I heard the Holy Spirit said, don't even touch it. Come and follow me. And I'm sure I'm not the only one. I've heard awesome testimony living in that camp with a multi-millionaire. I had the privilege of meeting him from Australia. Wonderful man of God. And from the moment he met with Jesus, he said, I don't want nothing else. I found the pearl of great price. And he gave away everything. And he walked like an ordinary man with nothing. But he had Jesus. Never forgot that, brother. So it's going to cost us. Like someone said, the lamp is free, but the oil is costly. The same oil that burned in the synagogue, that burned in the temple, day and night, and night and day was a special oil. Was the oil that the olives were grounded with rough stones. We saw it in Israel when we visited. It was grounded with rough. The, the, it was rough processes go through, but they want every ounce of oil from that olive. And that's what God is. He has some of us on the potter's wheel to get the oil of his spirit out of us so we could burn for Jesus. Amen. We could burn for Jesus. That people's life can be changed with you because of the anointing upon our life. That's what it's all about. Much has been given to us and much is required of us. 
we can't keep it to ourselves. Whatever God gives us is for somebody else. It's for somebody else. Amen. Thank you, Lord. He says in Luke 14, 26, if anyone comes after me and does not hate his own father and mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters, yes, even his own life, in the sense of difference or to relative disregard for them in. Some translations said indifferent. You're indifferent. You love them, yeah, but you're indifferent to them because God comes first. God's plan and purpose must be first in our lives. He says we cannot be his disciple. If he's not number one, we cannot. Plain is the words of Jesus and it's for in red. We cannot. I know I'm speaking to somebody here. We cannot be his disciple if we're going after the thing and we're not letting go. The greater will not come to us. We've got to let go. We got to let go. We got to let go of those things that are holding our hearts tightly, that is taking our focus off the Lord. We got to let go of those things. And some of us hold on to those things as our securities. It give us, you know, cause our chest to go out a little higher. Even ministry could become an idol. I remember once God asked me, he said, which one is more important? Is it your relationship with me or your position as a minister? Talking about position, our hearts now. Which one is more important? Being at Jesus' feet or getting the amens from the crowd? Both are needed, but which one is first? We got to take heed to instructions. It re releases the supernatural. And I believe I'm giving some instructions here by the spirit that is invested in me. We got to take heed to instructions. It releases the supernatural. It releases breakthroughs. It baptizes us with uncommon wisdom. God wants to uproot some ungodly pillars that has been built in our spiritual foundations. And this is what I'm going to conclude with because he spoke to me about since Thursday morning, very, very early of this, what we are about to do. And I've asked Reverend Paulette to do this because he dropped in my spirit that she, she, he has anointed her for, to do this for us. So we're going to uproot every ungodly pillar that was built in our spiritual DNA, in our spiritual foundation. Those hindrances is causing, that's why some of us cannot move forward. Because in the spirit realm, we are tied up. We have ropes still around our neck and feet that we are not even aware of. And it will bring us when we are loose. And I know we'll be loosed because the Lord spoke to me. This is how we're going with this. We have a compromised church. We have evil culture. We have evil authors that's been built against us. We're going to, by God's spirit, we're going to believe those authors to be demolished in Jesus' name. And we, at the end of it, we're going to be reconnected with the agenda of heaven. And like I start this session we're going to have open hearts that would attract open heaven. And if we have a clear view of what heaven is like, it will be so clear that we will not be able to miss God anymore. And it's not for ourselves. It's going to be for those coming after us, those God going to send our way to challenge them, to lead them, to guide them into all truth. Thank you, Lord. Reverend Paulette, it's so over to you now. Thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Um, I don't know. Do you want to answer or do you want me to do that exercise before they ask question? 
Um, I. What do you feel? What do you decide? Okay, because everything is spiritual. We don't want to. That's what I felt we should go into it right now. Let's okay. go right as a teaching. Let's let's sever and cut those things. Yeah, I don't want to do, take another stream here. This is what we will do because I hear a sound as she was talking. The sound is saying, "Out of my belly should flow rivers of living waters." Thank you. So I will ask you when we are singing, and the song is very simple: "Out of my belly should flow rivers." Rivers of living water, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's a little bit singing. We will put our hand on the belly because uh, curiously on the belly also sit a lot of things when we do deliverance. So as we are singing, some of you will be in tongues, some, some of you will be in tongues, some of you will be, if you don't speak in tongues, because some of you, I don't know if some of you don't speak in tongues, what you will do, you will just say hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And you think about the blood. What will happen is everything bubbling, everything that is not from God, we start being uprooted from there. Uprooted. Mm -hmm. And don't, don't be afraid if you have to take tissue and whatever is coming out will come out. Whatever spirit will come in your mind, just uh, you can say to that spirit, come out. If you hear like a uh, uh, rejection, just say, come out. If you hear like hurt or deep hurt, you say, come out of me, deep hurt. As you ask, it will be like an auto deliverance, but we do it with the song. You put your hands in your belly and you just hear the song out of my belly. What will happen and this, what I'm seeing is that the, the flow of your rivers will just gush out and whatever is not from God will be removed from you. In Jesus name. Yes. From there and the Lord will start opening the eyes, the ear and all of the rest. So it's like a, a refreshing of the Holy Spirit but at the same time is um, there's water. It's cleansing of water. If the water coming from bitterness and everything it will be removed. So just one minute but I want you to put your both hand on your belly and those hands are like the hand of Jesus. And as you are pressing in, you will see that you will have to release. Let me put the sound. Okay. Sister, recordings for me to have the sound. 